Hello everybody, my name is Chris. Um, you may have seen me in a couple of videos with my uncle, um, otherwise known as Pompano Brownie on YouTube. Um, he's been really good at helping people work with pompano fishing, surf fishing, and helping them along. It doesn't seem like a lot of people are willing to give a lot of information on the beach. A um, little bit of a secretive fishing type situation, but um, we feel that you know everyone should enjoy the sport. Um, so over the years, him and I have done a lot of fishing together. We have some different fishing styles, things he likes, things I like. Um, he prefers the spinning reels. I prefer casting reels. And some of the differences in that as well come with the tying of knots and connecting your leads and making leaders themselves. I know he's had videos in the past with his uh, um, rig making board, which is a great idea. I don't happen to use it only because of speed and I'm used to doing things a certain way, so you just stick with it. Um, but what we want to show you here today is um, possibly uh, how I do the loops on my rigs and how you can do some good blood knots for your shock leaders and your rigs themselves. Um, you don't want a lot of hardware to replace, so those blood knots replace the need for swivels um, and connectors a lot of times. Um, you'll see here... I use a, this is a, my reel line, so this is what's on my reel. This is a 14 pound uh, suffix titanium line. Um, you fill your spool as good as you can when you're, you know, you're, you're casting because you want it to come off nice and easy. But on the other hand, there's so much force coming out of that rod that you have to have shock leader. Um, and I, this is, you don't have to get a real expensive line. This is P-Line actually, and it's pretty cheap um, at a lot of the um, tackle shops. Um, this particular one is 40 pound test. So you gotta have a lot of, you're gonna have a ton of torque on that rod. So to cover that torque, you have to be able to withstand that pull. Uh, some people I have seen put braided line on their casting reel. Um, I've tried it and I don't recommend it only because braided line does not stretch at all. Mono line will always stretch. Uh, has a little bit of give to it so that give sometimes prevents you from snapping the line if you put too much torque on it. The braided line also when it's on your reel if you're drop fishing on a boat yeah braided line is great. Uh, when you're casting there's so much torque any kind of a bird nest or mess up you have on the reel with braided line just takes away from your time fishing um, because it's going to take a lot more to get those knots out of that little tiny string. So I usually always stick with the monofilament line. Um, so right now what we're going to do, I'm going to do a quick blood knot just to show what we go through. Um, so this would be the side that goes to my um, rig. And usually I run the full length of the rod, <clears throat> give it about a foot past the tip, and then make sure that wraps around your reel three to four times at least. That's going to be enough to withstand anything and pulling your line into your spool. So that full length, go around your reel three, four turns, um, and that will give you enough to hold that. <clears throat> so the part that's coming off your reel is here. This is your um, your shock leader. I usually just, there's no set amount, just a good distance apart. Hold one side with your pinky. Take the other. Wrap the smaller um, line size. So this is my 14. <clears throat> I'm going to wrap that around uh, about five or six times. Um... It really doesn't matter because that side is your side you want the it's it's the limpest side of the line so you're gonna put it through in between the two lines and you're gonna hold it so now your other side is your heavier line heavier line doesn't like to um, 
doesn't like to shrink down as good as the small line. So you're going to only go around this one about four, uh, we'll go five times. Um, when You'll see when we're connecting it to a rig, I go even less because it really doesn't matter. So the little where you have it pulled through, you're going to come back through that same hole. And I'm going to try and show you here. It's going to come back through that hole where your other line is. Hold both of them. So now you have two sides through a loop. You can continue to pull this one through. Don't pull it too tight. Then let go and start to pull them together. Once you get about there, now I'm going to go off camera because you're going to want to wet this a little bit. You got to, you have to lubricate it um, because the line, as you pull this, it's going to heat up. Um, just the laws of physics. It's, you're going to get some heat, and if you heat up monofilament line the slightest bit, you reduce the strength, and it's going to break a lot faster. So in this case, we're going to just get it lubricated and pull tight. It's kind of gross, but you guys have been through some gross uh, things, I'm sure, out on the beach. Um, so now here is... See if I can get a good shot of it here for you. But it's a nice tight tube of twisted line. And now what that does is that allows you to take your nail clippers. And you, this particular one is going into your reel. This is going to be coming through your eyes on your rod. So you want this one really close, and we've pulled it so tight that it really can't come loose. You have to make sure it's tight. If it's not all tight and pulled down, it can unravel on itself. But once, it's because we wet it, pulled it tight, and got it together, it should not come undone at all. So this, you can either cut them both at the same time, which this one lines up kind of nice. Get the clippers really close to that edge without cutting the knot, and nip it off. So now you have a nice clean knot that will slide through all of your eyes um, without bothering anything. So that right there is our blood knot when we're fishing on the beach. Okay, so we have done, uh, we did the blood knot. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the way I do rigs. Um, everybody's got their own way. Um, some people measure, some people don't. I kind of eyeball everything. But I will show you a loop of one of my rigs. Very, very easy and simple way to do it. It's going to come out almost the same way um, that you've seen Pompano Brownie do them on the board. Um, but it's going to come out in my hands the way that I do it. Um, and you're going to need uh, basically a toothpick. I mean, I actually take, this is like off of a, a skewer, like a wooden kebab stick. Um, just something to keep with you. Uh, because you're going to see in a minute what we're going to use that for. Um, the line itself that I use, I use fluorocarbon line. Uh, you know, everybody has their myths and ideas about different line. I do tend to see some um, extra fish. I mean, just compared to people around me sometimes, um, I do see fluorocarbon being a benefit in a lot of cases. So I do use fluorocarbon. The problem with fluorocarbon um, you have standard monofilament line like we showed and you want shock leader to stretch. Mon um, the fluorocarbon line, because of the way it's made, it's very brittle. Uh, so it has almost zero stretch. It's kind of like a braid. It's not going to stretch at all. This is why you really do need that shock leader on there because when you're casting and there's all that torque, you have knots. Every time there's a knot, that's a weakness in the line. So you go to cast without a shock leader, all that force on that line just makes it snap. You want that shock leader to kind of stretch, absorb, and then go through. So people that don't use a shock leader, that's that's the major risk in everything that they're doing. Um, snapping, I've seen rigs snap on people all the time. Um, so what I do, um, you're gonna see here, to make a rig, this is just one of the loops in the rig. We're going to just make a simple circle like this so this is just a circle and pinching it with my fingers so here's your loop now your toothpick this is going to slide in between 
the line that you have in the loop. So this is the top of your loop. This is in between the two lines. So here is where it gets a little tricky. We're going to hold this in between the two pieces of line and twist. One, two, three, four. We don't want a lot on the fluorocarbon uh, because like I said, it does not like to make really tight knots, especially in the higher, um, uh, the higher pound tests. So now you have that toothpick in there with a the loop. You come down to the bottom of your loop and take the line and make another loop. Just pinch it together, slide it through the hole. Whoops. We're going to slide it through this hole and pull it all the way through and take out our toothpick. Now at this point, usually what I do is I grab this with my teeth and hold on to it. And then I'm going to, like we did before, pull it, not all the way, but just, just enough. So right now I'm going to do that off screen. And this is what you're left with. So you have this loose, almost looks like a blood knot with a loop through it. So now you have that loop through it. We've reached that far. And just like last time, um, very important, especially on the fluorocarbon, to lubricate this section of the line because now when we pull this tight, we, we do not want to get any weakness out of this. This is your, your actual rig. You don't want to fish on there and it break off right at your knot. So I'm going to do that now. Then we're going to pull it quick and tight. And when we do that, we get a nice tight knot on both sides of this loop. So here's the first section of your rig where your hook is going to be. So some people cut this off. I do not do that. When you cut that off, now you're using a single line as the weight um, holding your hook. You like the hooks to be kind of off the line and floating out in the, uh, not in the air, it's underwater, um, but off to the side so it's not going to get all wound up on your line. So this double loop tends to help that, you know, work. Um, the, the hard part, I, I tend to use beads. Um, you'll notice this is like a purple. I get them from a lot of the trout fishing um, websites. They have some really good ones. I think these ones are maybe six or eight millimeters. Um, it's a little hard to get through the hole, but you push that over the loop. And now this is my flasher. I don't use a lot of floats per se. I use more beads um, for color. This one, um, I tend to like you see, you kind of pay attention to what's in the surf. Uh, and I know Pompano, they like um, coquina clams and they dig this stuff out of there. And if you really look at coquina clams, they're pink, they're purple, they got little bits of hues of blue and pearl. So I tend to stick with those colors on my rigs. Uh, and it seems to help out. So now I leave that loop. Um, like I said, some people cut that. And then I take one of my hooks and everybody knows what these are. I mean, simple circle hook. Um, so now I come through the front eye of this hook like that. Just leave that on there. Then pull the hook through the loop and let it come up on the hook. Give it a little twist and turn. Now you have double set of line without having to tie a knot on your hook. So now if anything ever happens, say this hook breaks, I've had pompano straighten the hooks, I've had sharks straighten the hook. Now if that ever happens, you don't have to cut this line and make a new rig. Um, you can simply take this and slide this down and you're going to be able to take your hook off. You still have your loop. So now that you still have your loop, you can get another hook 
and put that back on without having to tie a rig, get out another rig. Um, and you just slide the new hook through. Once again, pop it through and pull it tight. And that's your rig. So you do that, some people do it two times, some people do it three times. Um, that's all up to you. Um, how, much, how much hardware you wanna put out in the water at a time. Um, when you're not using a lot of swivels and using blood knots, it, it's not as costly. Um, so this is my rig, 40 pound test. Um, and a double line on the hooks gives a little bit more strength it seems. Um, obviously, you know, if you guys have any questions, go ahead, put them in the, put them in the comments. And, uh, if I get on there and I see them, I'll try and answer the best I can. Well, Chris, I can't thank you enough for doing that video for the channel. That blood knot is just a superior knot that I tried uh, doing a video on about a year ago. And I, I think the big difference there is, is I was trying to use 50 pound tests for my shock leader and then. 40 pound test really allows more loops and a bigger stronger knot and i love the way you make the rigs and there is no doubt in my mind that they work i've watched you slaughter the pompano over the years and uh, a very cool way of making rigs I appreciate you sharing that if you like this video please subscribe to our pompano brownie channel there will be links in the information section on all the hardware that chris used and that'll do it for this video.